What is going on with Cormani McLean at Colorado? The number one or former number one high school cornerback in the country has yet to play a defensive snap for Colorado and doesn't look like he's going to see the field anytime soon. Let's talk about it and how big of a deal this is after the bumper. Stay tuned. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload all the time. Now, the, the grandiose question that is going around for everybody that has been watching Colorado play, uh, Coach Prime and the Buffs play, uh, they continue to set all kinds of records when it comes to uh, attendance are selling out every game uh, viewership they have three of the top five highest uh, rated games in the country this year their first game i think did 7.25 million their second game they followed that up with 8.73 million and then this last game against colorado state a game that kicked off at 10 o'clock eastern Really like 1030 Eastern. It didn't kick off at 10 o'clock Eastern because the game before that, the Florida game went late. So it kicked off closer to 1030 Eastern. Hit over 9 million. Hit 9 something million with the peak at a, of 11.1 million people tapping in to watch that game. Uh, just incredible. Just, just in freaking incredible. And so, but during all that time, uh, there's a player that a lot of us thought we would see by now that has not taken one defensive snap, and that is the former number one cornerback in the country, Cormani McClain. Now, Cormani McClain was the crown jewel high school recruit of this latest recruiting class that featured Dylan Edwards, a guy who's obviously showing out, and right now the current starting center. I'll, obviously, the recruiting class was filled. Uh, it was the highlights were Travis and Shador and all the transfers, but Cormani McLean was the standout freshman that was a part of the class, along with Dylan Edwards. I think they were the top two, Cormani being the five star, Dylan Edwards being the four star. Now, we've seen Dylan get off. Dylan has had big games already this year. In the three games they played, Dylan has scored, he scored four touchdowns their first game on national TV in front of seven million people. So, Dylan is doing his thing, but we've yet to see Cormani. Cormani was such a big deal that Cormani actually got to announce that he was going to Colorado, flipping from Miami to Colorado on Million Dollars Worth of Game, the podcast with Gillian Wallow. So that's how big of a deal Cormani was supposed to be. And we have yet to see Cormani play. Now, I'm going to show you a tweet put out by Brian Howe. He is a reporter out there in Boulder, covers the buffs covers coach prime and this is what brian uh tweeted from coach prime's press conference recently he said with travis hunter out colorado head coach Deion sanders said the buffs will use a committee at quarterback he said cormani mcclain isn't ready huh cormani mcclain isn't ready now obviously recruiting sites aren't perfect right but there's typically two positions that they or that they get right a lot. Like they get these right. These guys typically, especially the, with the number one guy, they typically get these right. And that is quarterback. They get a lot of those right. And cornerback, ironically. You know, cornerback is a position that's tough. It is a hard position. And as you see, a lot of top really good corners want to go play for prime. That's how you get Travis Hunter. That's how you get a Cormani McClain. You don't get those guys at Jackson State or Colorado if you're not Deion Sanders. Nobody else in the world gets those guys to come to Colorado uh, if your name's not prime. And with Cormani not seeing the field for a team who isn't that deep, it's not like they're all world guys in front of Cormani. There's Travis, okay. But then the other guys are a bunch of transfers or guys that were backups other places or, or guys that simply just aren't that great. I mean, at least not yet. I mean, Colorado defense giving up a whole lot of points, and they're just not that great that yet. Uh, yet. And a guy in a Cormani who was a five-star, who the recruiting rankings typically get right, who stands at like six foot two and was amazing in high school, 
to see him not take one defensive snap yet. And the coach still to this day with your starting corner, your best player out saying he's still, quote, not ready. That's tough. Now, I just want to give you kind of like a, a tutorial over some of the best cornerbacks, you know, number one corners in the history of like 247 composite ranking. So here was the 23 class. Obviously, Cormani's number one. Like that is what we're showing you. And typically guys that are ranked this high, 13th overall recruit, number one in position, number three in the state of freaking Florida. <laughs> She's the number three player in the state of freaking Florida. They typically see the field pretty early. Don't believe me? Let's go to this class, class of 22. Oh, oh, we, we're pretty familiar with that guy. The number one corner happened to be the number one player. That's Travis Hunter from day one. Well, you can call it swack, whatever. He was him. He was the guy. That's the thing. Too many people are comparing Cormani to Travis. Cormani's not Travis. That's evident. Nobody else is Travis. That is what it is. But it's not just Travis. If you go to the class of 2021, the number one corner was Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. Kool-Aid McKinstry played pretty early. He played as a freshman. Now Kool-Aid McKinstry is considered the number one cornerback going into the 2024 NFL draft. Played as a freshman, number one corner in the country as a high schooler, started as a sophomore, started as a, started as a junior, is the top-ranked corner going into the draft. It doesn't stop there. You go to 2020. The number one corner was Keely Ringo. Keely Ringo played as a freshman, started at Georgia. No, I think he redshirted his freshman year, but started as a sophomore. But at Georgia, it makes sense to redshirt your freshman year because it's Georgia. It makes sense to not see the field a whole bunch because, you, I don't know, they just the defending back-to-back -back national champions, and Keely Ringo was a big part of that defense, gets drafted, had first-round grades by some people, still ultimately goes in the second round. We can keep doing this. 2019. <laughs> 2019. It was Derek Stingley. And we know the history of Derek Stingley. True freshman. They said he came. He enrolled early when LSU was uh, playing you know, in their bowl game or practicing for their bowl game. He got to practice, and they said he was the best cornerback walking off the field in high school. Straight into LSU, went to DBU and became instantly number one. Voted the you know the best DB in college football as a true freshman. Played on that team that had Jefferson and Chase and Joe Burrow. That obviously ultimately won the championship. When his time for the draft comes, even dealing with nagging injuries, still goes number three overall over Sauce Gardner. He's a top dude in the NFL now. So, like I said, the recruiting rankings typically get the cornerback position right. At least the number one guy. I don't know about everybody else, but at least the number one guy. And so for Cormani coming into this Colorado team that obviously need, obviously needs help at DV, you see they're giving up, what, 35 points per game? <laughs> they're giving up a bunch of points. And for him to not be ready, it makes you scratch your head and wonder what the hell is going on. My guess, this is just my guess, it may not have nothing to do with what's happening on the field. You heard that right. Now, this is not me. No, I don't know anything. I, I, my guess is that Cormani may be doing something off the field that is present, that is preventing him from being on the field. Because one thing about Prime, you know, from covering him at Jackson State is that you can be an all world player. You can be the best of the best. If you're not handling your business off the field, he will not play you. I don't care how good you are. If you are not handling your business off the field, he will not play you. He doesn't care how good you are. I don't know. Once again, I'm not in those practices. Cormani may be struggling in practice. That could very well be the thing. But I think he's too talented. He's too talented to just not just to be struggling that much in practice for them not to give him any burn, any burn in the games, like any burn. I think if I just had a guess, put my thinking cap on, you know. I would guess something is happening off the field, whether it's, you know, he's struggling to adjust a college life, uh, maybe his grades or something. I don't know. I think he's too talented of a player to be struggling that much in practice. And maybe it's just a practice. But for when coach, when prime says he's not ready, I think it may have to be something off the field as opposed to on the field, because that dude, this defense ain't, that damn good to not play the number one quarterback in the country, especially when you just lost your best corner. They're not that good. 
They're not good. They're not Georgia. Corm Keely Ringo doesn't start right away at Georgia. Kool-Aid McKinstry may not get on the field right away at Alabama. Now, Derek Stingley got on the field right away at LSU, but he's different. He's just different. But this Colorado team aren't those teams. This Colorado team aren't those teams. And this kid, as far as the talent-wise, isn't that far off from those guys at that point of their career. I think it may have something to do with off-the-field stuff. This is not me knowing anything. This is me guessing because he's too good not to keep, not to put on the field unless there's something behind the scenes going on that we just don't know. But that kid is uber talented, uber, uber talented. And like I just showed you the history of top ranked corners, those guys usually play a lot early. And for him to still have not seen the field yet, even with the Travis injury and coach saying he's got a lot to work on, he's still not ready. We're three weeks into the season. This isn't this isn't training camp. This isn't the third week of training camp or whatever. He's not ready. This is third game of the season. We're going into game four against Oregon. A school Cormani could have went to, and he's still not ready. Something's going on there. Something is going on there, and that is going to be something to watch moving forward. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Coach Prime says Cormani McLean is not ready to see the field, even with the Travis Hunter injury. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, my name is Jeff Flight Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Flight Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload all the time. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at JLightC7. That is on Instagram and Twitter at JLightC7. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.